All right. So today, our second learning target in Chapter 5 is distinguishing the difference between absolute and different thresholds, and then discussing whether or not we can sense stimuli below our absolute thresholds and be influenced by them. <clears throat> so first, we have to start off by talking about this area of psychophysics. This is an area of study where psychologists study the relationship between the physical characteristics of stimuli, such as their intensity, and our psychological experience of them. Kind of brings me back to our prologue when we talked about Wilhelm Wundt, who was the very first German psychologist that had the very first psychology experiment conducted in a laboratory in Leipzig, Germany, the first psych psychologist to conduct an experiment. And it was a sensation and perception experiment. If you remember, they were studying reaction time. And then his student, Titchener, brought psychology to the United States, opened up the very first psychology lab in the United States. So both of these psychologists that were studying and researching and conducting experiments on sensation and perception in today's world would be referred to as psychophysicists. So that's a branch of psychology that explores the relationship between physical characteristics of stimuli and our psychological experience. All right, absolute threshold. Absolute threshold is simply defined as the minimum level of stimulation needed to detect a particular stimulus 50% of the time. This can include any of the five senses. It could be an absolute threshold of light, sound, pressure, taste, or odor. And like, like I just said, our threshold means that we detect it 50% of the time. So what is the minimum level of stimulation in order for us to detect the stimulus 50% of the time? That's what our absolute threshold is. And it can be determined, but unless you're looking really at vision and hearing, we typically don't measure absolute threshold. This website is kind of fun. Um, if you get a chance, go on the PowerPoint and go to the website. It actually can help you determine what your absolute threshold is for hearing. One of the things that's important to understand is that sometimes it's not just physical intensity that can influence what we perceive. Sometimes psychological experience factors in. So the signal detection theory basically says that there is no absolute threshold in some cases, that sometimes we can detect stimuli based on our experience, our expectations, our motivation, and our level of fatigue. So, for example, this man looking at the radar screen might be a military personnel, might be looking at the screen and his job is solely to detect potential threats that are coming our way. So he might be more likely to detect a faint stimulus below his absolute threshold because he's experienced, he's had training on perceiving things on a radar screen. He also is motivated, maybe knowing that someone's life might depend on him detecting a stimulus early on. So there are lots of different ways we can um, find that sometimes our absolute threshold can be reached based on a psychological experience and expectation. This next part of the chapter talks about subliminal messages and how sometimes we are influenced by things that we're not consciously aware of. So subliminal messages are below our absolute threshold for conscious awareness. In the book, it talked about advertising in the 1980s, um, there was a marketing company that sold advertising to movie theaters that when people were watching previews to movies, there would be very brief visual flashes of popcorn and Coke and candy. And they were selling to these movie theater companies based on the idea that people subconsciously would go to the concession stand um, or they would be more likely to buy things from the concession stand if these subliminal messages were flashed across the screen while they were watching the previews. Well, what we know and what can, we can conclude is that sometimes we are truly influenced by things we're not consciously aware of. 
But it's important to understand that we, we can't really find that our behavior changes as a result of subliminal messages. So if you weren't hungry and you went to the movie and movies and you watched the previews that had these subliminal messages flashed, it's not like all of a sudden you would be motivated to go to the concession stands. What it's saying is maybe if you were already hungry and thirsty and maybe wanted to buy something from the concession stand, subconsciously these short brief messages might be what pushes you over the edge and influences your decision. There are really good YouTube videos on this screen that you should get a chance to watch too that demonstrates the subliminal messages. Priming is another example of sometimes how we make associations unconsciously and how it can predispose our perception, our memory, and response. Um, in the book, they talked about an experiment where there were two groups of people. And each group was shown pictures. And the pictures were generally positive pictures, you know, pictures of puppies or kittens or babies' faces that were cute and cuddly and fun. One group um, that was exposed to these pictures actually were subliminally flashed while they were looking at the puppies, babies, and cute baby faces. They were flashed kind of grotesque, dark, gory images that they weren't consciously aware of. But what was interesting is after they looked at the pictures with the subliminal messages, they were determined or they had to determine kind of their overall feeling and rank the experience. And compared to those who weren't flashed the gory scene subliminally, their rankings were really high and were really positive, where those who had the subliminal messages flashed at a level they weren't consciously aware of, they actually ranked them lower. And they found that their negative attitudes were brought forth, even though they weren't consciously aware of the negative scenes that were being flashed. So priming is another example how sometimes we make associations or we feel a certain way or memories are brought forward because of these unconscious influences. Just like maybe after looking at this slide, you feel just a little bit more positive towards your psychology textbook. The other thing that you have to be um, familiar with is what's called difference threshold. Difference threshold is the minimum level of stimulation that is required to detect a difference in the change of stimuli 50% of the time. So we experience the different threshold as the just noticeable difference, or JND. So when you're looking at absolute threshold, you're simply looking at detecting a stimulus. When you're getting a question or dealing with different threshold, it's when you notice a change in the intensity of the sensory experience. So with vision, when do you notice that the stimulus is getting brighter or it's getting darker? With sound, when do you notice that the volume is increasing versus decreasing? In taste, when do you notice that the flavor is stronger or more intense versus weaker? In odor, when do you notice the smell increases and is stronger or dissipates and is, you can't smell it as well? That's what difference threshold is looking at. Well, a man by the name of Weber came up with the idea that in order to detect two stimuli as being different, that it must differ by a constant minimum percentage rather than a, a constant amount. And you guys really don't have to know the percentages, but I'm going to read them off to you just because it's kind of interesting. For light, the just noticeable difference tends to be 8%. For weight or pressure, we tend to notice a difference around 2%. And with sound, it's 0.3% in frequency. So it's kind of interesting. What you see on the right is a man, and he is supposedly tasting the difference between coffee blends. So 
when does he notice a difference in the slight variations of the coffee that he is tasting. So taste tests. And some people are very much skilled in a particular area. You have people that are like wine connoisseurs and they can detect the slightest vari variation in the flavor of the wine. I oftentimes think of like Mr. Gottwig and how when it comes to music, he can detect the slightest pitch change, whether it's a little flat or a little sharp. So that's considered an example of difference threshold. All right, and the last thing that we're gonna talk about is what's called sensory adaptation. Sensory adaptation is our diminishing sensitivity to an unchanging stimulus, and this is important. When we understand that the stimulus hasn't changed in intensity, but our experience of it diminishes. So for example, you see the hot tub. When you get into a hot tub right away, it's really warm and you notice how hot it is, but you eventually get used to that hot temperature and it doesn't seem as hot. But if you were to take the temperature, it still remains constant. The picture of the woman with her glasses on, right away if she puts her glasses on, she might notice the pressure of the glasses on her ears and on her nose. But after a while, her sensitivity to that pressure goes away, and she might look for her glasses even though they're already on her face. Sometimes people do that with their cell phones in their pocket. They look for it, and it's either in their hand or in their pocket. They just didn't realize it because they adapted to the pressure. The guy in the bottom right-hand corner is plugging his nose. Right away, you might walk into someone's house and notice the scent, how usually families and households have a certain smell. And then after a while, after being there for a while, you don't even notice the scent or the smell. But that same intensity of the smell is still there. It's just you have become accustomed to it, so your sensitivity has diminished. And that can hold true for our sense of taste as well as vision. So I think what's important to remember is that the stimulus remains just as intense with sensory adaptation, you have just become accustomed to it and your sensitivity has diminished. And that is it for this one.